Oh, this is Navy Old Salt Gamer. I uh, just wanted to do a quick update. I realized this is like the perfect environment for a Stirling engine. Very cold outside here on Europe, but so you don't have to cool anything. So what I did is I ran my fuel line into a furnace. I heated my hot tank up at 3 megapascals. Uh, at 1753 degrees it's insulated so it's not going to go anywhere so what I did is I just looped the output into the tank into the hot side of the Stirling engine and put the cold side back into the tank and then I'm going to automate this so once the tank gets to a certain temperature maybe a thousand the hotter the better I'll have this heat the tank back up. This is set to 9 mega, well, 8.5 megapascals. So once this gets uh, too uh, pressurized, because this can only take, uh, the Stirling engine can only take, uh, I saw it here somewhere. Uh, it's in the writing somewhere. It's about to more result. Max pressure 11k. Uh, 11 megapascals. So if it gets to 11 megapascals, this is going to blow. So I have this set to 8.5 and I have it blowing out the top in case there's any volatiles in there because you release volatiles into 100% oxygen and uh, you might get a nice flare out of there, but it's not going to hurt anything. So let's go ahead and fire this up. I don't know what the power output of this can be. I don't have a hook to anything right now. So required is going to be, a th uh, I think, 100 because that's what this requires. Potential is what we're looking for. Um, so we don't have this hooked up. I tested it. It did run really, really well. It takes a couple seconds to spin up. So it runs fast. Everything's running really nice. It looks like I can get about uh, 4.5 kilowatts out of it. That's not bad. Considering right now it's running free. Pressure's changing a little bit. Temperature's going to go down real slow. Yeah. Not much though. So if I automate this, I got enough gas to supply an army over there. So um, this might be worth it. 4.46. Now, I don't know what makes this go up or down. Uh, maybe the temperature of the tank with it dropping a little bit. I'm not sure. But I just thought this was an interesting experience, experiment here. It's really cruising. Um, it's going down slightly. I don't know why. Maybe let's check the tank in here. There is a tank you have to put in here. you got to watch the pressure of this. So we're good. And, uh, four, four megapascals. That's not too bad. I don't know how that affects anything. So I didn't lose much there at all. So if I automate this, like I said, uh, what I'll do, I'll just have this come on where this reaches maybe a temperature of a thousand. Uh, start heating things back up. I can probably... I can't do that because that'll pollute my. I don't want to link my input and out to, to put together unless I put a one-way valve here. I could do that because I don't want any of the exhaust to get back into my rocket line. That would not be good. But I might just leave it like this. See what happens. Um, four kilopascals. No, for, I'm sorry. Four watts. Kilowatts. Like I said, it takes a while for it to get going. Four point, yeah, 4.4-ish. 4 .4 it does seem to be going down slowly. The only reason I can think that is happening is because the temperature in here is going down a little bit. So, you can actually put some of these in series, too, and have them run off the same tank. So I wonder. Like I said, I, got, I can go up quite a bit more in pressure. So let's... And I'm wasting the electricity right now. 
because I don't have it hooked up. Let's raise the input the two, the output to five. Oh, that's too much. Boom. Am I raising the temperature in here or am I lowering it? Staying stable. Well, down a little bit. Yeah, it looks like the t as the temperature goes down, that goes down a little bit. So there's 1.7. I gotta watch the pressure in here though, huh? 78, 1.9. Well, that gets quite hot. Okay, the pressure in there stabilized. This is a huge tank, so it's got a lot of room for fluctuation in here. This is kind of interesting, so it wouldn't take much for this to for this to fire back up. And it's at 1.7 temperature, so it's still dropping. Something's got to be warming up here. The only thing I can think of. Is it still going down, or is it? I'd like to see if this stabilizes. It's not going down. Let's open this. I'll put to 10. So that's dumping a lot more heat in here now, but it's not really heated too well. settings where I want it. Let's make this go a couple notches higher. Keep the pressure stable in the furnace anyway. Let's go up to 20. There, the pressure stable. The temperature still rising, so and maybe down one. 19. Still going down. 13.3, How are we doing over here? Like I said, this is a huge tank, so it's going to take a lot. It doesn't matter what's in this tank, it just has to be hot. And the temperature is going up now, I think I saw. Yep, a little bit. 12.7. Now the pressure's going up, so I would have to balance that a little bit. Have it automatically adjust that, keep the pressure where I want it. It has gone back up, so it is the temperature that affects it. But I don't know if that's an efficient way of making electricity or not. And it's just the uh, pressure's going up again, so I would have to have this automate between certain settings to keep things where I want them to be. Yeah, that would be easy to automate. 1660, temperature still going up in there. And the, yeah, the water just still, that's what it is, it's a temperature, that's what I wanted to know. So we'll shut this down. I'm curious to see what kind of nastiness I get out of the top when I reach 9. There is quite a bit of volatiles in there right now. Maybe I better shut this down a little bit. Turn that down to 1. When I stop the input, we'll turn that down. Let some of the volatiles burn off. I don't care if they fire up in there. Six. So it looks like, you know, about 4.5 is a good temperature. But I thought that would be interesting. Uh, next video I'll have this wired up into my input, have it all automated. Uh, into my power input, have it all automated. But that's uh, about the fastest I've ever seen a Stirling engine run. And I figured when I thought about it, I was like, you know, 
on Mars you have to cool this to get it to run. Out here you don't have to cool it. Not in a minus 141 degrees. So this this works really well. Okay, so that was a quick video on the Stirling engine. Uh, tell me what you think. I don't know if this is the best application of it. Uh, there may be a way just to, at a certain point, well, I don't know, because this is not, the volatiles in here are going to burn off eventually. Looks like the oxygen's burning off first. That's kind of scary because there's a lot of volatiles in there, so if this gets overpressurized, I am going to have a nice little fireball off the top here. But, okay. Maybe I can feed this. I could probably mix. Yeah, maybe I should go with a one-way valve here to make sure I don't get the thing going back in and tie these two together. Um, that way I could burn off the extra volatiles that are in here instead of blowing them out the top. Okay, working pretty well. Now I'll have to hook it up and not stop wasting everything. You're supposed to watch the pressure in this tank. Yes, it did go up. So when you fill this tank, there's a you have to put a canister in there. And unfortunately you can't really see it. Uh, don't overpressurize the canister because as it runs, it will pressurize a little bit. And uh, I think I put four megs in there. I probably could have gone a little less. Uh, I don't know exactly the function of this. It mentions the more moles, the better. I put nitrogen in it. Uh, it's an inert gas. I don't think you want to put like volatiles or anything in there. Okay. Uh, is it Navy Old Salt Gamer on Europa. This is episode 10. If you like these videos or they're helpful at all, or if you have any recommendations, go ahead and subscribe and like, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hydration.